Today's program focuses on one of the most fascinating mysteries in American history. It involves the Mafia and a former street cop turned lawyer who committed himself to driving out corruption in his hometown of Youngstown, Ohio, once referred to as Murder Town, USA. In the process of driving out the Mafia and corrupt politicians from Youngstown and Mahoning County in northeastern Ohio, he was targeted for assassination by organized crime. He became the first public official ever targeted for refusing to cooperate with the Mafia. And in short, the attempted assassination on his life served to wipe out organized crime in a community that was once polluted by the Mafia and corruption in office. His story was related on the A&E Network City Confidential, and this saga is played in the minds and hearts of a million people in Northeastern Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce Mr. Paul Gaines, the prosecuting attorney in Mahoning County. Paul. <laughs> Well, thank you, Crystal. <laughs> thank you. Listen, Paul, Youngstown, Ohio is a county seat, correct? Yes, uh, it's no different than Manhattan for New York. Okay. Now let's start at the beginning. Uh, you were a street cop in Youngstown, Ohio, and then you went on to law school, correct? Yes, I attended law school while I was a Youngstown police officer. And the reason I went was because I was president of the police union in 1978 and actually played the role of an attorney in representing the officers with their various grievances. And you won by a scant 515 votes. So and how did you feel election night? Well, it was somewhat anticlimactic. Um, it's okay, now we've won. What do we do now? <laughs> but it felt good. And following your victory, what was going through your mind? And, and what were you hearing on the proverbial streets? Well, very shortly, actually, uh, shortly after I filed to run, uh, we were hearing talk that if I would win, I wouldn't take office. Uh, after I won the election, the rumors became more prevalent. Uh, that I would either be set up uh, with a woman uh, and cocaine would be planted on me and, excuse me, the fact that I would not take office. And under Ohio law, the only way I would not take office would be if I uh, died or were killed. So we were taking that as basically physical threats. That must have been frightening. Well, it, it, it was cause for consternation. Uh, and, and as it turned out, uh, all of the, what we were hearing, uh, we, we later found out was actually true. So what happened? What happened next? I've been shot. Okay, do you need an ambulance, sir? Yes. Okay, I'm going to connect you with Boardman Police. Hang on. Uh, when I pivoted, the slug went through my left arm and uh, uh, entered my side and exited at my spine. Uh, he fired again. I thought he had fired twice, but he'd only fired uh, a second time as I was going down. And I don't recall, uh, after going down, the next thing I remember is waking up. Uh, even though he later testified, the shooter later testified that he had pointed a gun at my chest to empty it into my chest, that I had put my hands up in a defensive posture, but that the uh, weapon had actually jammed and he couldn't pull the trigger. But I have no recollection of that. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paul Gaines, targeted by the Mafia, a hero, a Serpico kind of character, rough, Hewn, street cop turned lawyer, committed to driving out organized crime in Youngstown, Ohio. He did it, but it nearly cost him his life. Only in America, and only on the Crystal Heart Show. You can't listen to a ball game at 8 in the morning on the subway, but all you need is a copy of the Daily News to relive one courtesy of Bill Gallo. The news celebrated sports cartoonist has been delighting his readers for more than half a century. His inspired lines and squiggles have captured the mugs, personalities, and foibles of many of the greatest athletes of all time, from Yogi Berra to Muhammad Ali to Walt Frazier. Bill's Inkwell has also been the birthplace of some of the most famous fictional people of our times. People like Baseman Bertha, UC Bernie the Bulgarian, General von Steingraber, and others. Bill makes them so vivid that you almost expect to find them hanging on a strap next to you. And looking at Bill's sketches of them in the daily news, of course. Here's a man whose stroke on a sketch pad is as 
<laughs> sure as Tiger Woods on the fairway. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bill Gallo. Bill, hi. hi. Let's start at the beginning. As a kid, were you into sports yourself? Oh, yeah. I was. Uh, I grew up in the story of Long Island, and I played ball, and I, I did what every other kid did. I had dreams of becoming a ball player, in fact, like we all did, and uh, always interested in sports. Uh, that happens very early in life. I mean, I, I think that I... My father was a sports writer, first of all, so it was in my family. But uh, the playing of it uh, was just uh, part of uh, growing up. Um, Arthur, you've been labeled the Bob Hope of baseball, especially during the Southeast Asia conflicts. You made numerous trips over to the Vietnam area for the Defense uh, Department and USOs. Could you elaborate a little bit on this? Certainly. Uh, I was with the Mets at the time, and, and after the season was over, and the Mets weren't doing too well in those days, and, and I would call the, the Defense Department, and together with the USO, I would, I would put together a group of baseball people, the biggest names I could find. At this point in time in American history with this tragedy of, of horrific act of war that has happened here in New York City, uh, do you see any negative impact maybe on the fans' participation or the fear of, of terrorism? Well, uh, ever since it happened, I've always been very wary that uh, something should not happen at the ballpark where you have 50,000 people. And thank God we've had great security here in, with the Yankees. George Steinbrenner has taken every possible precaution. And uh, I, I know they've done so at other parks too. And um, well, you know, you, you just hope it never happens. You just hope it never happens. And we're at the Washington World Stamp Expo, where there are over 200 stamp dealers, 135 post offices are represented, and so if you're looking for a stamp and you can't find one, you're not looking very hard. The Postal Service here this year is also trying to get kids stuck on stamps, so they've dedicated a whole section to children, and they have books and stamps and a lot of giveaways and t-shirts. It's really wonderful. We're going to take a little tour around. We're going to talk to uh, a few people behind the scenes, look at some rare stamps, so let's go on a little tour of the Stamp Expo. Okay, we're here with Dave Fowler, and Dave, tell us your position at the post office. Well, I'm the Executive Director of Stamp Services for the United States Postal Service. I'm responsible for all aspects, all elements of the stamp program. What brought you to the show today? Oh, just to uh, look for some bargains, look uh, to visit some of the countries that I've collect. And what countries did you collect? Uh, Finland and Vatican and Monaco, some of the more obscure ones. Okay, and, and what'd you think of the show? I had a great time, but I'm leaving here a little bit poorer. <laughs> hey, tell us about the show. Did you enjoy it? It's great. It's a lot of fun. There's acres and acres of stamps and dealers and people having a great time. And uh, did you collect anything special today? My specialty is stamps with pictures of stamps on them. There's about 60 of us in our worldwide club, so every stamp we buy, we get at least two for one. 